Hey guys, Corporal G here, the COC in Kentucky. Just finished my Italian Navy, and so I'm going to show them off real quick. All right, let's get it started here. Got our custom rattles here, half inch. I used the uh, actual roundel from the map. Uh, there you go. So it doesn't get confusing. And I didn't want to use the fastest one because that's on my infantry bases. I feel like if you have the same one, it just kind of gets all kind of the same. Everything is, gets all jarred up. So I'm trying to keep it a little different here. All right, we've got some coastal artillery from uh, historical board gaming. The uh, fortifications from D-Day. Those little tents still. I have no clue about those. Minor factories, they're all just flat brown. Nothing special. We do got Mussolini painted though. I'm going to do a little bit more touch up on his skin. But that's about it. The mountain and basin. And he's the only leader I've painted so far. His uniform was pretty simple, so I just knocked him out real quick. All right, let's move on to the infantry. All right, we got our 1914. I'll get focused there, come on. Uh, 1914, uh, Axis now is out of box. I cut off their bayonets. There we go. I only got five of these guys painted. I think I need to paint a little bit more. They're not too hard. The only bad thing about the Italians is their uniform takes so many coats. Now they're normal infantry. From the Caesars miniatures, I think. Brown base, fascist roundel. These guys will be clear or a matte finish, but I'll do it right now. This is one of my first ones, so that's when I just dipped them in the stain. Kind of like how Sired Blood does it. So I didn't do any washes, so they kind of just all look the same there. They're really easy to paint, just tan and, tan and brown. Really nice. Except for all the coats with the base color. We got our mountain infantry. And uh, they came from 1940, out of box. Then um, moving on is the uh, Airborne that I really enjoyed painting. Let's get real close up here. Oh, I gotta do the skin right there. But that camouflage came out really Really good. Sometimes I hold off on the uh, flat coats and clear coats, just in case if I do want to add something else. Usually they don't chip too bad. But it'll be all good. Then I got my Marines. Came from I Would Never Grow Up. They're just pretty simple ones right there. Then the uh, Colonial. Which eventually I'm still thinking about making those circles white for the Colonial infantry. Because the historical board game's token's white. So I'm trying to keep my colors kind of common. And these came from the uh, Airfix. I think I have eight of these. And, there, and if you watch my Anzac video, I did this whole Mod Podge thing with black paint and waited 30 days and stuff. And they're pretty, they did a good job. I can tell you that. Definitely worth it for those Airfix models. Moving on to our vehicles. Uh, I'll never grow up armored car. 
Sometimes I paint the windshield, sometimes I don't. Uh, next from historical board game. Yeah, I unfortunately gotta use a few German pieces, which kinda sucks. But it ain't too bad. I even see if I can like design a an alternate universe vehicle that they probably would have built or something like that. Wanna get all extra. Oh, they're advanced mech. And I still might do a camouflage from that polka dot camo. So, but right now the base coat would be just fine. Here's our cavalry for now. I think I've, I ordered some cavalry, some 15 millimeter cavalry. And when they come in, I'll give you guys a video about them. See if they're the same scale as these guys. So I'm not, a big fan of the uh, 1 in 72 scale of the cavalry units. They're just way too big for my personal taste. I forgot to show my German cavalry last time. These came from Axis Nala's miniatures. And you can get them on eBay in packs of five. So they're a really good steal. You don't have to paint or anything. And if you do do solid colors, just paint it black and you'll be fine. But sure was nice not painting any German Calvaries. I'll put them over there. Uh, some artillery. Got 1940 out of box. These guys are pretty big. I'm not the biggest fan of these. They kind of take up a lot of real estate. So they might be able to be changed. I don't know. At least modify, cut off the guns and get something a little bit smaller in that circle. I experimented with some pieces that didn't work out very well. I didn't want to do it to all of them because I won't have any anti-aircraft guns for Italy. Uh, artillery from I Will Never Grow Up. I still gotta paint those wheels. Whoopsie. I kind of like these more than the uh, out-of-box axis now eyes. Uh, the German. Heavy artillery. That came out pretty nice. Self propelled artillery. Same thing as a German unit. We're just, I'm just going to say they were lend lease to Italy. Which is a pretty good excuse to use them. Uh, heavy. Self-propelled artillery. Heavy self-propelled. Yeah, I really don't worry about the bottoms too much. But I do paint the bottom of the tracks. Alright, let's move on to their tanks. Here's a historical board game in uh, Italy's light tank. I love these guys. They're freaking awesome. I'm still thinking about painting a Homeland color scheme where they're all green, grayish green, I think. Maybe. I'm still thinking about it. But I'll also order, I'll order 10 extra just in case. Uh, 1940 out of box. Um, I would never grow up. Tank destroyer. I do like these. And some tigers for right now. They never get used, so there's no point as of right now, but I would like to paint. Some type of heavy tank. And the P40 from a historical board game, is, it's just too small. It's the same size as a medium tank. But Italy did have two heavy tanks. There's another one that I saw on Google. They look pretty cool. All right, let's do the uh, uh, aircraft here. 
these guys move. All right. Let's start off with our air transports. Uh, the uh, German transports plane, historical, historical board game. Not too special. Um, out of box fighter from 1940. Uh, I will never grow up. Italy actually has a pretty good side of the Air Force that I painted up. Um, out of box, 1940. Tactical bomber. I will never grow up. Tactical bomber. Uh, we got some medium bombers over here. Again, from I will never grow up. Glad I got them before they uh, cleared out. Or discontinued, I mean. Uh, out of box. Strategic bombers. And, uh, these are Japan's. But I'll use them for Italy too. They're heavy. I think they'll do just fine. If not, think about bombing this, making that a six engine plane. But that's a lot of time consuming. I would paint all my pieces first, then uh, start doing mods and stuff. And last but not least, the Caproni Jet Fighter. From historical board game. So I need to magnetize them. Try to do some weather in there. All right, let's move on to their uh, boats. Got their fleet markers here. Just two of them. Just finished these guys today. Got their transports from I Will Never Grow Up. Good bit of coastal subs. I think I got uh, eight transports, five coastal subs, two torpedo boat destroyers, and that one coastal defense ship from a historical board game. I just threw it in there. Then we'll move on the subs. And I kind of did that Chevron paint scheme to the whole all of them just to, just because I haven't added any decals yet I don't know if I want to or not but what I did was I primed them in white then got a gloss white to paint over that to make it really white and it took a, a good bit of coats and I got it all white then I painted the grays got all the gray in there then I painted I took a red marker red pen really and I drew out my lines. Then I took a tiny paintbrush and painted over that as I could guide. So not perfect, but there's something. So we just got our out of box subs. There we go. Sorry for all the shakiness. German heavy subs. 1940 out of box destroyers. We got, uh, those three are light cruisers. Then we got the uh, out of box Zara class heavy cruiser. Those three with the brown decks in the rear. Italy's pretty awesome. They don't have all their ships aren't all brown, so I'm kind of glad I ended these guys. These guys were last because they were pretty easy to paint. Um, we got the uh, nah, design 1933. Battle cruisers. I really like those ships. 
Moving on, we got some escort carriers. The German ones, I just cut off that that uh top that top pipe. Then we got some Aquila aircraft carriers. Two are from 1940 and one are from a historical board game. I mean, uh, I would never grow up. And I, and there is one from a historical board game. There's four different sculpts for that carrier. And I got that one. Serpino, Serpino. I just made them heavy. They're really big, so it just kind of makes sense. Then for the battleships, um, I'm kind of in a dilemma. I've either got normal battleships, those four right there, the literal class, Patero, however you pronounce it, was actually in four built, and I got two out of box, one. I would never grow up and one 3D printed one. So I might make two normal battleships, two fast battleships. I don't know yet. Or I might just try to find one online to make a normal battleship and these guys will be the fast ones. Then we got the Italian uh, heavy battleship from Shapeways. USB 41 or something like that. That one's pretty rocking. And that kind of wraps it up for Italy. I got those red dice to take the infantry militia. I mean, place them back here. I mean, there was one down here. There we go. We're all fixed. But that's them. That's a Yugoslavian torpedo boat destroyer. They don't have any decals, so I just painted their uh, tip purple. That's their old ships. But other than that, Italy's doing pretty good. So. I think the next one I'm going to paint is probably France because they're kind of small and I already got one color for them. Britain, I'm still kind of iffy on it because we're about to start playing. I don't want to take their units off the board yet. But that's it for uh, Italy and everything. Organize that. There's our custom trades that I made. I have a styrofoam and a construction paper. They kind of slide in, slide out of the drawer, so if you do want to take them out, you can. So it kind of comes in handy. But I'm glad we built the drawer design. So it's pretty convenient to do that. Instead of taking out a tray, open it up, take your units out. Or when you get done with the battle, you know, you gotta place them back in. It just kind of gets more of a chore than anything. All right, but that's it uh, for today. Hopefully I can get some more pieces painted up for you guys and out there. All right, catch you later.